What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question one in the math three questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that we're just trying to find the remainder when the polynomial x cubed minus one is divided by x plus two. Now the big idea here um, in terms of math three and in terms of dividing polynomials is the remainder theorem. So here's the big idea of the remainder theorem. If I'm looking at the linear factor x minus a, in this case, x plus 2, or x minus negative 2, so negative 2 is my a, the remainder when I divide um, any polynomial by this is going to be the same as the value when I plug a, also known as negative 2, into the polynomial for x. So I'll go ahead and do that on this side of the paper, and I will say that x cubed, it was minus 1 is now being replaced by negative 2 cubed minus 1. Negative 2 cubed is also known as negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So let me go ahead and negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 in my calculator. I get negative 8. Subtract 1 from that and it gives me negative 9. So negative 9 would be my answer here, but I am going to do this using one other math skill, and the other math skill I'm going to use is called synthetic division. Now this is an easier way to divide a polynomial by a linear factor, such as x minus negative 2, so negative 2 is my a, um, and in this particular problem, it's not necessarily the easier way, but I'm going to show it here because it is an easy example of what synthetic division looks like. And in future problems, if you keep up with the videos I do on these Math 3 questions, um, you'll have an easier example to look back on and see exactly how we do this. The idea is, if you look at all of this junk, basically, here's the number I'm testing, here's all the coefficients of my polynomial. So I've gone ahead and done that over here. I'm testing the number negative 2, and I have 1x cubed plus 0 x squared plus 0x minus 1. So I have a coefficient from every um, power of x, including my constant here. And so now I go through the actual process of synthetic division. Um, if you look over here, you can see kind of a zigzag type thing where I'm adding as I d go down every column. And then to get from this number to this number, I multiply by negative 3, which in this example was the number I was testing. So if I come over here and do this, I'm going to add as I go down this column. So 1 plus nothing equals 1. And now as I go diagonal and up, I'm going to multiply by negative 2, the number I'm testing. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And then I add again. 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. I'll go diagonal again and multiply by negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives me positive 4. And then I add going down the column. 0 plus 4 equals 4. I multiply going diagonally. 4 times negative 2 equals negative 8. And now negative 1 plus negative 8 equals negative 9. There are other questions where I know that I'm going to have to do some synthetic division, but I did want to give you this example to show that uh, this idea of synthetic division, this process, will actually give us the same number as if we just plugged in the value of negative 2 in to our polynomial. So our answer, the remainder when the polynomial is divided by the linear factor is the same thing as when we flip the sign of this number make it negative 2 and plug it in for x in the polynomial. And that, uh, that answer is negative 9. So here's a sample of what one of these graded response boxes could look like. Um, if I want to write negative 9 in as my answer, I need to give the negative sign its own box and then give the 9 its own box. I'm going to look for the negative sign bubble underneath the negative sign where I wrote that. I'll look for the 9 bubble underneath the 9 and bubble that in. And that is how we answer and actually write our answer in the gridded response boxes for a question like this.